Hey there, if you've landed on this video and you were hoping to see sort of at one of my adventure rides, this is not the video for you, so I would leave right now. This video is aimed for cinematographers or people that like making really high quality, um, you know, videos on the GoPro. And uh, if that's you, stick around, because I'm gonna show you um, a set of incredible hacks that will help you make much more cinematic video of your motorbike rides or four wheel drive tracks. Okay, so if you're still here, I'm assuming you are a video nerd. And if you use a GoPro for making, you know, motorbike or four wheel drive videos, you will love this set of hacks. And credit goes to um, Tom L. And Tom, I don't even know your last name. Um, Tom's a, a viewer of my, of my YouTubes. And um, he and I have been going backwards and forwards, sort of exploring these hacks, but Tom very much raised them to my attention. So, if you've watched, um, watched my sort of GoPro videos in the past, you know that I, I've been suspecting that GoPro does something funky with the ISO and the shutter speed. Um, and the frustrating thing is, there's no way to tell, right? You, you just don't know what the GoPro is doing. Well, check this out. Exposure information in the bottom, we've got ISO and shutter speed, and we've got a histogram. So that's hack number one, and I'll show you how you can put that onto your GoPro. But now that I've got ISO and shutter speed um, information here, I've been able to confirm like exactly how GoPro works, and it does not work in a way that's conducive to capturing cinema cinematic video. But the good news is the second set of set of hacks that I'm going to show you will actually. Um, fix it so it actually hacks the GoPro to work the way you want it to work. So when I talk about creating more cinematic video, what I'm really looking to do is to actually slow the shutter speed down so that um, we actually create motion blur, which is quite natural and how the eye sees, and it makes the videos look more cinematic than if you're shooting with very high shutter speeds. And the way you typically will do that is by using neutral density filters to actually put sunglasses on the camera and slow the shutter speed down. And if you want to learn more about that, you know, click the card above. I've got a whole video which just talks about how NDs work and why you use them, etc. But um, as I said, I've always thought, I've, I've realized, I come to the conclusion that the GoPro doesn't work the way a normal DSLR works and it was doing something funky with the shutter speed and the ISO. And um, let me go and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you what it actually does. So I'm gonna, I start off, I've got no ND filter on the front and let's go and actually have a look at what's happening uh, and I'll show you the sort of the funky thing that the GoPro is doing. So you can see on a bright sunny day with no ND filter, the GoPro is running at ISO 100 with a shutter speed greater than 1 2,000th of a second. As I shake the camera, you'll notice that nothing changes and that's because the shutter speed is already very high. But now when I go inside where there is less light, you can see that the exposure setting is about ISO 400 with a slower shutter speed of 1 240th of a second. But watch what happens to the exposure values when I shake the GoPro. The ISO jumped to 800 and the shutter speed increased to 1 680th of a second. And then as the camera steadies itself, the GoPro lowers the ISO and lowers the shutter speed back down. Now if I put an ND on and then I look outside, when the camera gets shaky, it's boosting the ISO up to over 1600 and the shutter speed is going up to 1 500th of a second. I believe this behavior only occurs on the Hero 11 and Hero 12. GoPro describes this behavior as gyro compensated exposure. And they say the following, quote, Longer shutters are worse for stabilization, so the Hero 11 12 is smart and will shorten the shutter if it detects camera movement. But as you'll see, this is working against us in two ways. So there are three ways of controlling exposure on a GoPro. Shutter speed, ISO, and through the use of ND filters. I've color coded the shutter speed and ISO slider, and let me explain the color coding. Let's go shutter speed first. 
So based on the tests that I've run in the past, to get cinematic motion blur, I target shutter speeds of 1 125th of a second to 1 250th of a second. This is the ideal range and that's why I've color coded these green. If the shutter speed drops below 1 125th of a second, you get excessive blurring of the image, like in this clip. So that's why I've highlighted that in red. I never want to go below 1 125th of a second or it makes the picture quality pretty much unusable. Now above 1 250th of a second, the picture quality is definitely usable. It's just that the shutter speed is faster than I'd like. It freezes the motion a bit too much. So that's why I've highlighted that in orange. Moving on to ISO, generally lower is better. ISO 100 will give you the cleanest image with the least noise. As you start increasing ISO, you're introducing noise into your image. Two stops up to ISO 400 is fine. You'll hardly notice anything. 800 ISO is the upper limit for me. After that, the images just become too noisy and degrade pretty rapidly. So that's why 800 is in orange and above that is in red. I just don't want to go there. And finally, the ND scale shows the four options that I use. No ND filter, an ND8, which is three stops of light reduction, an ND16, which is four stops, and an ND32, which is five stops of light reduction. I'd normally use an ND8 or ND16. So the GoPro natively has gyro compensated exposure turned on. And what this means is that when the camera is moving, as in you're riding, GoPro prioritizes a faster shutter speed by increasing the ISO. You can see for what we're trying to do, this is taking both the ISO and the shutter speed away from the ideal ranges that we want to operate in. So the first thing we can do is to scan the QR code, which is in the comments below, to disable gyro compensated exposure. And this will stop this behavior from occurring. The second thing we can do is to scan the QR code for setting minimum shutter speed, which will now prevent the GoPro from going below 1 125th of a second shutter. So it will never go into the red. Finally, in the ProTune settings, we can set a max ISO of 800, and that will prevent GoPro from turning up the ISO too much and creating noisy images. So that means that as the light gets brighter, the ISO reduces until it gets down to 100, and then exposure is controlled by increasing the shutter speed. If we want to maintain motion blur, we're going to need to increase the strength of our ND filters. If the light levels start dropping, the shutter speed will slow down to 1 125th of a second, and then the ISO will increase to a max of 800. And at that point, GoPro's got nothing else it can do, so our image will be underexposed. If we've got ND filters on, we should be removing them, and if not, then it's just getting too dark to shoot. Of course, you can lift exposure in post-production to some degree. So instructions on installing the GoPro Labs firmware are below in my comments, and I've also included the links to um, all of the QR codes that I referenced. Um, thanks again to Tom L for drawing my attention to these new GoPro Labs functions, and also for collaborating with me on the links. Now, I haven't been out on a ride yet to test these settings out, but I will do this shortly. Anyway, I hope you all found this useful and look forward to hearing your experiences in the comments. Thanks.